Hello folks, we are back at the Oak Mulgi Indian Mounds in Macon, Georgia. We're going to take you on a tour of some of the sites and trails and things here. Um, we were here um, back on our antebellum trail video, but we couldn't really spend much time here. So hopefully we'll get a little better understanding of what this is all about. They have a big visitor center here. Um, it's a really nice uh, operation right at the moment the very front of it right behind you is uh, closed which is the opening uh, lobby and everything but the rest of the museum and the video and stuff like that are open we're not going to spend a lot of time with that but we'll flash through some of the postings if you want to pause just feel free but let's go out and see what we can find they have an amazing collection of arrowheads from all over the place I'm not sure and pottery pieces I'm not sure um, where they come from but it's a pretty neat collection and display these are not unique mounds there's mounds all over the US Eastern Mississippi US and uh, so there's other parks and other places to go if you're interested in this type of thing We'll do a quick walk through the museum and education center. They've got a lot of stuff in here. More than a quick video would do. All right, this is uh, the cornfield mound and it has uh, evidence underneath it when they uh, excavated it they found that there were rows of burned corn cobs which meant that they were uh, it was a cultivated field by the uh, Mississippian Indians um, who were probably master farmers growing corn beans squash sunflowers and tobacco um, the cornfield may have been used for ceremonial purposes because the crops were usually grown near the river um, archaeologists believe the location was used for a field and later covered to create a mound. The path to the mound isn't hard and it's nicely paved and everything, but it is uphill. We're going to go right inside this mound. You can go inside this mound. It was a ceremonial mound. They believe it was hollow inside with a clay floor. And they have reconstructed it pretty much the way it was. Um, and we're gonna try to get in here, although the entrance kind of covered with wasps, but I think we can get past them. <sighs> that was a very small tunnel to crawl through. But this is the original or a replica of the ceremonial lodge. It is pretty cool. It's about 60 degrees in here. It feels good. <laughs> It's about 80 degrees outside. Don't worry about Akila. He's in the car with biscuits, water, and food. Let's get back out of here. The Akmalji's Earth Lodge ceremonial lodge was uh, buried until it was exposed by workers. Um, in 1934, the intact original clay floor was exposed by workers of the Civil Workers and Work Projects Administration under the direction of James Ford. Distinct features of the floor were a bird of prey platform with three seats, a depressed fire pit, and 47 raised bench seats that extended around the circular wall and dropped in elevation as they neared the entrance, suggesting that the closer the person sat to the platform, the higher his status in society. Mississippians were, Mississippians had burned the building, possibly in some kind of cleansing ritual for, or for other reasons. Fragments of clay, 
charred timber and cane from the ceiling roof lay in a spoked wheel pattern on top of the floor and were carbon dated to 1015. A large pottery vessel was the only artifact found in the lodge. The trail through the park is a nice concrete path that uh, just goes from one mound to another. It gives you a lot of information along the way on uh, kiosks and signs. And um, we're uh, just following it th this ourselves. So they estimate it takes about an hour to get through the whole thing. So that's what we're looking for. In 1935, archaeologists discovered a Clovis projectile point west of the Earth Lodge. They uncovered the projectile point from a prehistoric fire pit and removed the charcoal remains for cataloging. When carbon-14 dating was introduced, the charcoal was processed and dated at 8000 BCE. The this Clovis Point was the first one found east of the Mississippi and provided evidence of early occupation in the eastern United States. Paleo Indians used spears to hunt large Ice Age animals such as Columbia moths, giant sloths, and saber-toothed tigers. The Clovis Point was in use for about 600 years, being replaced with smaller points as the larger animals died off. Quad, beaver, swanee, and delta points are some of the points manufactured to hunt smaller game such as deer, rabbit, bear, and turkey near the end of the Paleo period. On the side of the trail, they've got the outline of where there used to be a trading post back in the early 1600s or 1800s when the uh, traders came through and traded with the Indians. All right, we're gonna check out this. Trading with the British, 1690 to 1715, the Creek trading paths and the trading post site and the Civil War in 1864. Hundreds of axes, beads, clay pipes, knives, swords, bullets, flint pistols, muskets, burial parts were found in this area, contributing to additional knowledge to the story of the human activities of the Akamolji fields. Recovered artifacts are on display for your viewing at the Park Visitor Center. And there was the trading post They do have these cute things that you can scan your phone on and it'll give you uh, information. There are a lot of trails through this park. Um, not just the trails we're following, but um, you, you get the map and you can find all the different trails. The river trails, the Bertrand, Bertrand trails and uh, creek trails. So it's a pretty neat park. Um, they do say they have tick issues. But, you know, if you stay on the trails and out of the vegetation, you shouldn't have issues with ticks. The Great Temple Mound and Town Site. What conclusions can we draw with Master Farmer's evidence of extensions of old fields that retain? Remain, the number of mounds suggests that a large number of healthy individuals labored intensely to build the village and structures and to produce the food necessary to sustain a large population. There had to be strong leaders present in their society to organize and maintain such a large population. The successive stages of development of the mounds suggest a long period of occupation. Relatively little is known about the mounds except that they were topped by rectangular wooden structures, probably used for religious or ceremonial purposes. A stepped rampway descended from the summit of the mound to the plaza level below. Its size and presence is another indication of the advanced society that built and used it, probably for important ceremonies and rituals. Scientists can only suggest what might have been. True archaeological proof does not exist. The recovered artifacts further suggest that the elite class of priests and chieftains were carefully honored in their death, another sign of advanced culture of the Mississippians. All right, folks. There are a lot of stairs to get to the top of this mound. But for you guys, I'm going to do it. So I hope you appreciate all this. Because I see people coming down that are all winded and huffy. <laughs> but 
here we go. Let's see what the top of the mound brings us. Okay, there were only 85 steps, but I'm still not in shape for any of that. But it's pretty cool up here. Um, that's the city of Macon behind me. I don't know which is a better view, but uh, Macon, Georgia. And then you can see the funeral mound is right there. That's the only the only funeral mound where they actually found uh, bodies and evidence as, of uh, burials and various people. Some had uh, some had ornamentation with copper and, and jewels and things like that, but most of them were just plain people. So they must not have. Known. That's the uh, area where the trading post was, where we just came from. And if you look way down there you can just see the visitor center beyond all the other stuff which is where we just came from so not a bad walk not not bad up here it's a nice cool breeze up here we're above all the trees so um we're gonna cut down from here and uh let Akila out a little bit and let him run around and uh i hope you enjoyed this quick tour of the oak mal -G. Oak Malji uh, Indian Mounds. Okay? We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, share, like, all those things. Give me some love. I need uh, comments. Thank you. Bye bye. The one thing about hiking and uh, traveling around through Georgia, South Carolina, Florida is you want to watch out for these little buggers. That is a fire ant nest. And they're pretty obvious um, and they're everywhere I mean here's another one right here and there's one right there but if you step in them they will cling to your shoes and they will definitely follow you or run up your legs and chew on them so be careful of fire ants they do have this nice little pond that they say has alligators in it but it sure has a whole lot of birds and other creatures around it so there's a trail that goes around this pond and they do tell you to watch out for the alligators got some egrets and some herons and some various other birds way out over there where are they there they are looking for fish and frogs i'm sure this is a very nice park, and like I say, it's kind of up here along the, the river, so it's got a nice breeze today. It's 90 degrees, and I'm, uh, I'm eager to get back in the car with Aquila. <laughs> He's in there sipping on milk bones and, and enjoying the air conditioning. As we spoke about earlier, the railroad um, went through in um, 1843 and then again in 1873. And this, this railroad part here is when they wanted to straighten the line, they had to buy um, uh, portions of a farmer's land. Samuel Dunlap sold his land to let the railroad go through. And he uh, stipulated that he needed a way to get from one side of his farm to the other. And, this railroad tunnel was built way back then in 18, 4, 1870. And it was, it's pretty unique because it's all brick. Um, there is lots of clay in the area, lots of people who knew how to use bricks. And so they built this uh, tunnel and it's been here uh, ever since 1870. So um, it's on the historic landmark as a unique tunnel. It was built just wide enough for one man and horse and buggy. So. It's a pretty cool tunnel and of course when cars go through it they have to wait to make sure nobody's coming by from the other side. It's a narrow tunnel. We're gonna walk through it. <laughs>